Hi, Stuart. Hi. Um, I would like to know how you can surrender and also stay in control when running a business. You know, Alicia, I ran a business for 30, 40 years. And uh, the only way I was possible to survive being in business was by building in myself a system that was strong enough to do it without allowing the business to tear me apart. And I discovered through those financial obligations I had, I discovered that I need to keep going deeper and keep building the chakra system in myself in order to balance it out, to detach myself from it and do it without allowing it to drain me dry. So the answer to your question is very simple. It's time, it's inner work, it's building chi inside yourself, it's keeping your heart open, it's building a system inside that enables you to be connected with higher energy in the universe. That connection will give you the strength to be able to, you know, run a business, make money, get involved in all kinds of aspects of the world and without allowing life to drain you. It's work, you have to work on yourself. Most people that work in businesses, by the time they're 40 years old, I mean, they're ready. I mean, you look at them and it's like, they almost look like they're flayed, you know? all the juicy energy is usually taken out of them, you know, by the business because they don't work on themselves. How they run the business is on the overflow of their tension is how they run the business. So, you know, I, you know, I've told you this before I put myself in business. I did it for years started out, you know, dealing in $10 items and wound up selling usually expensive items to very wealthy people. But I, but I knew early on that I couldn't survive that unless I built a system in myself that was strong enough to be connected to higher energy in the universe. I mean, I remember once I told this story before I used to have when I lived in Texas, I had a candy manufacturing business that was growing exponentially very fast. And I, there, were, there was a major company that gave me a major order for my product because they wanted to test it in the market. And they invited me to meet with the president of their company. I mean, it was, you know, the Willy Wonka company, you know, in famous movies about that. And I, I went up there and, you know, they took me on a tour of their facility. It was literally an entire city block of just machinery. Nobody worked there except people putting the caramel in and at the beginning and at the end, loading up the trucks. And I looked at this thing and look, I was a young man at the time. And I said, Stuart, this is the future of your life. And I really, it taught me, I said, Stuart, what do you want? If you're gonna build a monstrosity like this, which I could have, it will really, you know, take your life, your spiritual life away from you. And then I looked at all the executives I was having lunch with and the people that I met there and every one of them was like literally drained of energy. So I made a decision to get out of that business. You know, and then I was in the art business and that was really no different. It was not quite as large, big and, you know, uh, but it was the people involved in it were really strange people and I had to deal with these people in order to run my business. I knew my only alternative, you know, was 
if I had to support myself and I was running ashrams and meditation centers at the time and I needed to support myself and I needed to make a lot of money to run these places. And I knew that the only alternative I have was to build a system inside that was strong enough to be able to deal with all of that madness that goes on in the business world and still stay connected with God. And I knew the only alternative I have was to stay connected with a higher energy, be nurtured by that and build a system that was strong enough to transform the monster kind of businesses I was involved in into something very small inside myself. It did not interfere ever with my spiritual growth because I knew the only way I could do it was to stay connected with higher energy, to build that kind of system inside myself, you know, and never to give it up, but say, Stuart, you know, you've got to live in the world. You have to learn how to live in the world. You have to learn how to work out your karma in the world. At the same time, you have to be connected to spirit. And it's that higher energy that builds an inner life in a human being that enables them to do all this stuff in the world. To give Caesar, Caesar's due, you know, without allowing Caesar to drain you dry. And the work I teach is so much invested in being in life. Life is sacred. And whatever you do in this life, it's sacred. You know, and it's coming to that realization that we are born on the earth because we have certain karma that we need to work out. And trusting that higher energy, you know, inside us will guide us through our karma. And sometimes that karma requires making a lot of money, having a big family, uh, all kinds of things that come that need to be worked out. And the only way to work it out is to build that kind of an inner life. And also to, to recognize that the external world has a really a singular purpose. And that is to remind us that if we are gonna live here and ever be happy people, we have to build an inner life inside ourselves that's strong enough not to allow the external world to suck our energy dry. Now, this is not easy because most people don't do this. Most people, they've manufactured a God called money. And they worship it and they, they surrender everything inside them in order to generate money. Scary, but that's what most, how most people live. Now, this meditation is about learning how to be connected with spirit and at the same time, learning how to live in the world and to be a happy human being. I've always said it, and I'll say it again. A human being is a point in a triangle that connects karma and life with higher energy. And the reason why people are so whacked out is that point in the triangle is not highly developed. So the energy of spirit comes into them and it becomes their personality, their ego, their, all of the madness. And that's what they offer to the world. Instead of if they're open, the chakra system is highly developed, it becomes love, it becomes joy, it becomes wonderment, it becomes compassion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's how you do it. But this requires very deep work on oneself. And this is really one of the rewards of doing this kind of meditation that I teach. It teaches you how to live in the world and to be free in the world at exactly the same time. You work out your karma and you're connected to God. And all of the human is transformed into the spiritual and one attains a state of enlightenment. Stuart, is it, could, 
could I say that it's um, the higher energy that provides the love, self worth, you know, everything that you would need. Yes. So that you don't seek that in the success of the business and you're just free to. But you have to build a system that's strong enough that allows the higher energy to do that. Okay. This is what I'm getting at, you know, that's the work of a human being to build that kind of system that allows that purity of love and spirit, that's God, you know, to come and that's what you, you have forgiveness inside you because people are gonna mess up all the time around you. Trust me, you gotta have a very deep sense of forgiveness. It comes from this higher energy, but it won't resonate inside you unless you have a system that allows it to do it. Then we live in the world and nothing intimidates us in this world. Understand? Nothing. We, we, we can deal with whatever comes up and whatever happens without allowing these things to drain us of our lives. I mean, relationships are wonderful for that because, you know, there's no, there's no easy relationship. If you wouldn't fall in love with somebody and want to have a relationship with them, it's going to take an enormous amount of work inside to build a system that enables you to do it. But the person you're involved with is an incredible reminder that you have to grow in yourself in order to love them unconditionally. And if this rings inside you, you know, if you really hear this, everything becomes a reason to grow, you know, not to be devoured, you know, to go into a state of depression and unhappiness because things are wrong in life. They're all a reason to grow inside yourself. You go into business and boy, you deal with some of the flakiest characters in the world. Trust me, I've had to deal with them. And, you know, if the heart is open and, you know, you can deal with them. And they don't, you know, you don't feel like you have to have your hands in all 10 of your pockets all the time. You protect yourself against the kind of nonsense that people do. I remember once, I'll, I told this story before, but it's really interesting. I, I was in Jaipur and I would, and I used to go there and I had, sources to buy all kinds of Indian crafts and stuff that I used to sell in New York. And I would fill up container loads of this stuff and sell it in New York. And I walked into an art gallery and I, it was unbelievable. There must have been eight, 10 salesmen there. And they saw me walk in the door and you know, was, and suddenly you can see in their eyes dollar bills. You know? <laughs> and they came at me. Like, I mean, I thought it was like a, you know, a, a flock of hawks diving to get me. They came at me. Oh, it's, you know, but, but. So they had a big statue of Ganesh there. So I, I, I went over to the statue and I took out a you know, hundred rupee note or something. And I put it in front of the statue of Ganesh. And all of these guys, these salesmen, they stopped and they looked at me and said, are you Hindu? I said, no, I'm not Hindu, but I have a lot of respect for Ganesh. And uh, he overcomes lots of obstacles and I make little donations. Well, you know, within 15 minutes, I was really involved in some really profound conversations with these guys about Hinduism, about Buddhism, about Ganesh, about... And by the time I left and I didn't buy anything from them because they really had nothing I was interested in all of them lined up to hug me. And they came one after the other and gave me a hug and said, thank you for coming in here. You're always invited to come in here. So it turned from this ravenous <laughs> attack by vultures looking for money to something that became really wonderful. And, you know, instead of being intimidated by it, you know, you learn how to do things that kind of changes the energy of a situation. 
I once had that with another guy, and this I'll never forget as long as I live. And I, I was, I was in uh, anyway, this, these caves, uh, wonderful caves built back in the Gupta period in the sixth century of Buddhas that are like ten feet high, an extraordinary place, you know. And I, you know, I spent about an hour or two there, and. And there was one Hindu place and one Buddhist place and the, the, the sculpture was unbelievable, unbelievably beautiful sculpture. So I'm coming out of there, going down to the, my car and my driver. And the salesman, little guy comes up to me and he shows me a Ganesh. That's a piece of plastic. That's probably worth about three cents. And he goes, 10 rupees, 10 rupees. So I look at him and I start to smile, you know? And I just started to laugh. I said, I said, 10. So finally, after he was got 10 rupees, 10, I looked at him and I said, look, let me ask you a question. So he said, yes, sir. What? I said, how much can I buy you for? So the guy looked at me and he started to laugh. And he said, no, no, you don't want me. I'm not worth anything. 10 rupees, 10 rupees. So the two of us made friends. We started to laugh and we started having a good time. And he suddenly cleared all the salesmen away from me. It was like a red carpet unfolded. And I, we, two of us, almost hand in hand, walked to my car. And when I got to the car, he gave me the little Ganesh and said, this is a present for you. And I looked at him and I think I gave him a couple of hundred rupees. And so I said, here, no, here's my present for you. So it turned into a situation for most tourists. It was like a nightmare, having to screw away beggars. It became something where I made friends with a guy who I probably will never see again the rest of my life. But it's a memory I will never forget. And all I did was ask him, I said, how much can I buy you for? Just kidding around with him, you know? And he started to laugh, no, sir, no, sir, I'm not worth you. <laughs> And by the time I reached my car, the two of us were holding hands and were best friends. So it's the things that usually intimidate. You have to have a chemistry inside to find the humor in a situation and find a way of dealing with people without intimidating them. And I mean, it took me years to learn how to do that kind of thing, but I learned it in being in business because I had to deal with, I mean, I was once dealing with a Rinpoche and I mean, this was unbelievable, you know, who's supposed to be the incarnation of Padmasambhava. And this guy was the toughest businessman I think I have had to deal with. And he, they, all the lamas that in the, the Tibetans I knew told me he was the incarnation of Padmasambhava. So in the middle of the business dealing, I had some partners with me. I started doing a meditation with this guy and I discovered and he was the incarnation of Padmasambhava, this guy. He was really powerful and he had absolutely no interest in Tibetan Buddhism. His only interest was, you know, selling art and selling this. And, but meanwhile, he supported 600 monasteries in China and Tibet. And I asked him, I said, why do you do this? You're not a Buddhist. And he said to me, he said, it's my responsibility. I mean, it was an extraordinary experience to be able to see a man who had no interest in his religion, no, but meanwhile, he single-handedly supported and made sure that 600 monasteries in Tibet and India and in, in China were running. It's getting to the other side of things, finding other things, and business brings you that kind of thing, but you've got to have the inner strength to be able to touch those things and find deeper essences and deeper things that exist inside people. And the only way I have learned to do this is you have to build an inner life. So that it's not only in business, it's in everything you do during the day. All the people that you have to, you know, deal with in your life. And this is not just in India, it's, you know, everywhere in the world, <laughs> where do you go?
Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, you know, just to finish this, this meditation is about learning to be in the world and learning to be free of the world at exactly the same time. And never to be intimidated by the world, but to be able to find how every single experience helps you to grow, helps you to become more of a human being. And that can only take place if we build an inner life that is strong enough to do it and discover that everybody in their own strange way is our teacher helping us to do this. If there are no more questions, you know, there'll be a meditation. There won't be a meditation this Sunday. I'm having a retreat weekend here, you know, uh, and, but there will be a, a meditation next Tuesday. So God bless you all and God bless you for being in my life and for being in these classes and giving me a lot of room here to grow inside myself and to get closer to God. And I have deep gratitude for that. Thank you. It's two o'clock. Bless you. Thank you, Stuart. God Thank bless. you so, so much. Okay, have a good evening. Good day.